Strange Arrival, Inheriting the Ancestral Temple Gu Jing's Introduction My name is Qin Jiwu, and I have been tormented by nightmares for three years. I pushed open the door and saw the well. I saw a corner of that eerie world. The well water has protected me, but it seems to have more secrets worth discovering. I just often think about which side is the dream. Chapter 1, Nightmares You are listening at NovelFull.audio Brother, brother, get up. A childish voice sounded, waking up Chen Jiwu who was still sleeping in the attic. He looked at the little brother kneeling on his bed with a frightened gaze. And the little brother is looking at him with his cute big eyes. Xiao Xiong. Before he could finish speaking, Xiao Xiong shouted downstairs, Ah, brother is awake. A voice came from the living room downstairs. You too, hurry down and have dinner. Oh. Xiao Xiong responded and got up from the bed, went down to the attic, and quickly ran downstairs. Chen Jiwu stared intently at the position where Xiao Xiong had just knelt. After a while, he closed his eyes and gently shook his head. Reach out and open the window closest to the bed. Kacha. The window opened and sunlight shone in. Feeling a fresh morning breeze, he breathed a sigh of relief and reached out to wipe away the cold sweat from his forehead. I had another nightmare. In a rural village in Yangcheng, a family is having a meal. At the dining table, there is someone eating his breakfast. Xiao Wu, hurry up and eat. I'll accompany you later and go to the temple to offer incense. It's July 15th today. At this moment, an old lady walked out of the kitchen, wiped her apron with both hands, and said to Chen Jiwu. She is Chen Jiwu's grandmother. Chen Jiwu didn't answer, just nodded, and continued eating. Grandma saw his appearance and asked tentatively, Did you have another nightmare? Mmm, Chen Jiwu didn't stop moving and continued eating. Alas, you can eat it. I'll go ahead and offer incense to my ancestors. I hope they bless me. After Grandma finished speaking, she turned around and left for the second floor. She was going to pack up the things she was preparing to worship. After finishing his meal, Chen Jiwu went to the restroom again. On the wash basin in the restroom, he moistened the towel with water and washed his face. After cleaning, he saw himself in the mirror, and the face that appeared in the mirror looked like a young man of seventeen or eight years old. But unlike ordinary young people, this face does not have the youthful vitality that young people should have, but rather a bit gloomy. Thin and weak, gloomy, waxy yellow. This is the first impression this young man gives. Chen Jiwu saw himself in the mirror and was reminded of the day he had his first nightmare three years ago. Three years ago, it was my first time going alone to the ancestral temple to worship my ancestors. At first, it was very normal until I inserted incense. A strong wind mixed with sand particles hit me. I closed my eyes and blocked the direction of the wind blowing towards me with both hands, even the fragrance in my hands fell off. After the wind passed, I closed my eyes and took a few breaths, trying to remove the sand from my mouth. When I opened my eyes, I found no one around me, the sky turned red, and I couldn't see the sun. I looked behind me in fear and found that the gate of the ancestral hall, which was originally wide open, was now closed, with even the horizontal beam lying in the middle of the gate. Seeing this scene, the feeling of fear spread wildly in my heart like a runaway wild horse. At this moment, I heard a voice coming from behind me. I quickly turned my head back, but saw a dark figure standing at the side door of the lobby, waving at me. And the side door, which was originally tightly locked, was not as good as when it was opened, revealing the deep darkness inside the door, like an abyss. I was already scared and fainted directly. When I woke up again, I had already appeared in the county hospital. Seeing everything unfamiliar in the hospital, I looked at my grandmother sitting nervously by the bed, as well as the middle-aged man making a phone call at the door. Xiao Wu, you're awake. Grandma was a little excited when she saw me wake up. Ah. I struggled to speak, 
only to find my throat unusually dry, as if thick phlegm was stuck in my throat. At this moment, the middle dot aged man on the phone hung up when he heard what his grandmother said and walked towards me on the hospital bed. Ah woo, are you feeling better now? I don't know, Uncle San, what's wrong with me? I, cough cough. Before I could finish speaking, my throat started coughing. Come on, Xiaowu, take a sip of water. Grandma is holding a disposable cup in her hand, filled with warm water that she just went to pour for me. I have been fed out of this bottle of water, and my throat has finally become a bit comfortable. Grandma was afraid that I would choke and said to me, drink slowly, drink slowly. After I finished drinking, my grandmother took the cup. At this moment, Uncle San said to me again, your dad will come later. You can rest for a while and have the doctor check again later. Uncle San, what's wrong with me? Didn't I just be in the ancestral hall? I, who had a comfortable throat, spoke out in one breath about the question I had just asked. Ancestral halls. Uncle San looked at me lying on the hospital bed in confusion and said, Did you have a fever and feel confused? Before you came to the hospital, you had been sleeping in your attic all along. Yeah, you were sleeping in the attic just now. If it weren't for you coming out shouting and waking up Xiaoxiong and Xiaojia, Grandma wouldn't even know you had a fever. Grandma poured me another glass of water and asked me to hold it, saying to me. When my grandmother and third uncle said this, my mind was a bit confused, and I couldn't help but ask, what time is it now? 12.052, it's almost one o'clock, Uncle San glanced at my phone and said to me. Ah. I couldn't help but scream, and boundless fear filled my heart. I thought anxiously, why is it past midnight now? What's wrong? Uncle San and Grandma looked at me puzzled and asked me at shuyuan www.chaoshuyuan.com. I really wanted to say what was in my heart, but when it came to my mouth, it only turned into one sentence. It's okay. After speaking, I placed the cup by the edge of the illness, then lay down, turned over, closed my eyes, and dared not think about what had just happened. Although my third uncle and grandmother were very puzzled, they only felt that I might have had nightmares or a fever and confusion. Mom, Wu is going to bed, so let's go back too. Dot. The conversation between these two people became quieter and quieter, and I fell asleep like this. After that day, I haven't had any nightmares for several months anymore, and I thought that day was just one of my nightmares. But I was wrong. On the day of graduating from junior high school, I played with F.A. Xiao relatively late and fell asleep when we got home. On that night, I had another nightmare, and this time I found myself in an abandoned school. The weeds on campus are half the height of a person, and walking among them is extremely difficult. This nightmare seems to have nothing in common with last time, but it's not entirely because when I struggled to walk to the teaching building, I found a dark figure standing at the door of a classroom, just like last time. Standing at the door, waving at me. I fainted again, how did I actually faint? I can't remember clearly either after this one, I can feel that the time between nightmares is getting shorter and the frequency of nightmares is also increasing. From the first few months until now, I have had nightmares almost every day, each one being the same but different. The difference is that the scene of each nightmare is different. Similarly, in every nightmare, there is a shadow waving at me. Chapter 2, Strange Three People You are listening at NovelFull.audio Xiaowu, why did you stay in the bathroom for so long? Are you okay? Grandma's voice came from outside the toilet. Chen Jiwu stopped recalling and responded, I'll be out right away, it's okay. He walked out of the toilet and saw his grandmother standing at the door with a basket in her hand. The basket contained the food for today's worship. Chen Jiwu walked over to his grandmother and said, let me take it. He reached out to grab the basket from his grandmother's hand, but was dodged by her. No need, you go to the temple and wait for me first. Chen Jiwu looked at the basket and compared it in his heart, considering the distance between his home and the village temple, 
as well as his own strength. I thought that if I had come to pick it up myself, I might have walked slower than my grandmother, so I gave up and said to her, Okay, Grandma, I'll go to the ancestral hall and wait for you first. MMM. After obtaining my grandmother's consent, I left the house, walked out of the alley, and walked on the country road, where villagers kept greeting me. The villagers in our village all belong to the same clan, so if we count them all, they can be considered my relatives. So I tried my best to show a warm smile, but my gloomy appearance made my smile particularly frightening. But those people have already taken my smile for granted, except for the children. After arriving at the ancestral hall, I found that other villagers had already started worshipping, with many people, including women and children. At this moment, several women saw Chin Jiwu and walked over to talk to him. Chin Jiwu didn't dislike such conversations, but he couldn't say he liked them either. Just responding to what they said, and these women came to talk to him just to inquire about his physical condition. After a burst of cold and warmth, they left, while Chen Jiwu continued to wait for his grandmother to come. Chen Jiwu, who was looking around, suddenly saw the side door of the ancestral hall and found that today's side door was different from before. The lock on the door is missing today. Who seems to have opened the side door? Chen Jiwu remembered the eerie shadow, but this time, while he was afraid, a curious mood also appeared in his heart. He swallowed a mouthful of water and walked slowly towards the side door, reaching the entrance. The side door was an old redwood door, and Chen Jiwu placed his hand on it and gently pushed it in. Zia the wooden door made a sharp sound, but fortunately, the sound inside the temple was also quite loud, so not many people heard it. After pushing open the wooden door, Chen Jiwu realized that the scene inside the door was not as dark as he had seen in his nightmare. After pushing open the door, he saw a well and a black grand tutor's chair next to it. He walked over lightly and quickly walked to the front of the grand tutor's chair. Looking at the chair in front of him, which had an unknown age, he did not have the idea of touching it. But instead, he turned his head and looked at the well next to him, which was no different from a regular well. The only difference is that he can't see the bottom of the well, and the water in the well is very black. Apart from that, there is nothing special about it. Just as Chen Jiwu was about to leave here, he suddenly felt someone pushing him from behind. He fell into the well completely. Ah! Chen Jiwu desperately dug into the well, hoping to catch something and prevent himself from falling. But he failed, moss was everywhere in the well, it was very slippery, and he couldn't catch anything at all. He could only fall into the bottom of the well in despair, and the well water kept pouring into his mouth until it sank to the bottom. Cough, cough. Chen Jiwu, who suddenly woke up in the hall of the ancestral temple, spat out a large amount of water in his mouth. After vomiting, Chen Jiwu, who had come over slowly, looked around and found himself appearing in the hall of the ancestral hall. He looked not far away at a rectangular table, where the deities were enshrined. Those spiritual positions would be illuminated by a ray of red light, and the familiar red light made Chen Jiwu feel like he had another nightmare. At this moment, three people suddenly appeared in another part of the village, namely two men and one woman. The woman was holding a notebook, seemingly recording something. The other two men are communicating. This operation will be arranged by me. Well, I don't mind, keep that bag safe, let's first find the craft paper in this dream. When the monster appears, we will directly detain it and end this operation. I hope everything goes smoothly. These three people began to search for something in the village together, and they would enter every house they passed by. Every house has no lock, whether it's a regular door lock or the latest smart lock. The doors of each house were pushed open, and they entered with some purpose, searching quickly. Found it. The man found what he wanted in a house, a piece of yellow-brown craft paper. There is text written on the cowhide sheet, but the text is distorted and it is difficult to tell which type of text it is. However, strangely enough, when a man picks up this piece of paper, his mind automatically translates it into Chinese characters for him to understand. Ancestral Hall Side Doors, The Side Door of the Ancestral Hall 
Another man also saw the words on the craft paper, and the content on the paper came to his mind. Li Yu, we need to go and take a look. The woman who had been holding a notebook on the side said. Sure, Zhou Feng, wait a moment. If there is any accident, please protect Pei Jun. The man holding the craft paper said. Of course, let's go, Li Yu collected the craft paper and left the house with the two of them. The house was not far from the ancestral hall in the village, and it was only a few hundred steps to find the book garden www.xiaoshuyuan.com. They quickly arrived at the ancestral hall, and before they could enter, they found a person at the entrance of the temple. That person looks like a young man, as if he has just walked out of the temple. This person was Chen Jiwu, who had just regained his strength. As he walked out of the temple, he looked around and also saw Li Yu and the other three walking towards the temple. Chen Jiwu appeared very surprised because it was his first time encountering someone else in his dream, but he also felt very strange. He had never seen these three people across from him before, and how did they enter his dream? Thinking of Chen Jiwu here, he felt that they might be of the same type as the previous shadow. He increased his vigilance and prepared himself to turn around and run as soon as he made a move. The same goes for Li Yu and the others across from him. They have already regarded Chen Jiwu as the weirdo of this dream. Weird. How long have we only been in, why did we encounter weird? Zhou Feng angrily cursed, but his voice was very low, as if afraid that Chen Jiwu across from him would hear it. Li Yu, I suggest we run quickly, Lin Pei Jun said to Li Yu, who was walking at the front. This woman finally stopped taking notes and instead vigilantly stared at Chen Jiwu. No, we don't have anything to do yet, which means we're not each other's prey. But if we move around and accidentally trigger the eerie killing pattern, it's done. We just need to stay still for now and wait for the other party to leave. After a brief moment of contemplation, Li Yu whispered to the two people behind him. These two people heard his words and believed in his judgment, deciding to stay put. So, both sides have been deadlocked, observing the trickery, on the other side, and Chen Jiwu is also observing them. Chapter 3, Failed Actions You are listening at NovelFull.audio The two sides remained deadlocked until Chen Jiwu's legs were sore, and at this moment, Li Yu and the others seemed to have some movement. Li Yu shouted at Zhou Feng, although the other party deliberately lowered their voice, they were still heard by Chen Jiwu. Can you speak? It's different from that dark figure, is it a person? Chen Jiwu thought to himself. To verify his own thoughts, Chen Ji shouted loudly to them, Who are you? As soon as this sentence came out, it frightened the three people across from him. Then, Li Yu shouted to Zhou Feng, Let's take action. Chen Jiwu was very confused when he heard this action. Before he could recover, he saw the man wearing jeans and a black shirt with missing hands across from him. Yes, it's gone, as if he didn't have his hands in the first place. Chen Jiwu suddenly felt a shadow approaching him. He looked up into the sky and saw a pair of hands holding a large bag approaching him. He was afraid and just wanted to run away, but found that his feet had sunk into the soil and could not move. He could only let the big bag approach him and put himself inside. Chen Jiwu, who was packed into a bag, felt a darkness and difficulty breathing. At this moment, he heard the sound of conversation coming from outside the bag. We should have started earlier and wasted all the time we've been standing there. It was a man's voice. He walked over and lifted the bag, and Chen Jiwu could feel the feeling of lifting it. Enough, Zhou Feng, do you know how much danger your thoughts just now could bring us? The voice of another man rang out. The ending is good, okay. And this trick doesn't seem to pose any threat. You. All right, all right, but Gui has already been detained. Do you still need to enter the temple? A female voice sounded. The conversation between the three of them was naturally heard by Qin Jiwu, as soon as he heard the strange words. Chen Jiwu suddenly felt that these three people outside might really be people, so he quickly said, Help, I'm also a person, help. 
When the three people outside heard his words, their faces immediately darkened, and Zhou Feng tightened his grip on the bag. Li Yu turned his head and stared at Lin Pei Jun, saying, Have there been any records of monsters talking before? Lin Pei Jun nervously shook his head and said, There is no record of strange beings talking, but there are some strange beings who can speak, but these strange beings are not strange. Is that so? Li Yu's gaze fixed on the bag containing Qin Ji Wu. Zhou Feng, who was holding on to the bag, looked at Li Yu and waited for him to make a decision. Let's go to the ancestral hall first. If he's cunning, there's no danger in the ancestral hall. If he's not, we have to go in even more, otherwise we can't leave. After pondering for a while, Li Yu decided to let Qin Ji Wu go for now. Okay. Zhou Feng grabbed the bag in his hand and kicked it hard. Ah. Qin Ji Wu, who was originally begging them to let go of him, let out a scream after finishing this kick. Because this kick was very heavy and happened to hit his waist without bias. Qin Ji Wu, who was in pain, never spoke again, but silently wrote a note in his heart. Seeing that Qin Ji Wu had not moved, Li Yu and the others quickly walked into the temple, crossed the courtyard, and entered the lobby. There are side doors on both sides of the lobby, and two tables of different shapes are placed in the middle. One table houses the ancestral altar, and the other is the eight immortals table for offerings. Li Yu, who entered the lobby, was attracted by the eight immortals table. He walked over and reached out to grab it. I received a piece of craft paper, which is obviously not the previous one, but a new one. Be careful behind you, what? Li Yu was startled when he saw the content on the paper. At this moment, he heard the voice of Lin Pei Jun coming from behind. Zhou Feng. He turned around and found that one of the two side doors had been opened, and there was a black figure at the entrance of the open side door. The dark figure extended its right hand and waved to Zhou Feng among them, seemingly wanting him to come over. And Zhou Feng was indeed slowly walking towards the dark figure, and at the same time, his face was not very good, even the bag he had just been tightly grasping fell to the ground. Zhou Feng Seeing Zhou Feng getting closer and closer to the dark figure without any intention of stopping, Li Yu couldn't help but curse, damn it. Li Yu, save him quickly, Lin Pei Jun shouted anxiously from the side. I know. Li Yu looked at Zhou Feng's back, gritted his teeth, and used his ability twice today. As Zhou Feng walked slowly ahead, his feet suddenly sank into the granite bricks on the ground, unable to move. But Zhou Feng's face showed a happy expression, and he did not continue to walk towards the dark figure. Successful, Lin Pei Jun breathed a sigh of relief upon seeing the situation. No, it's not successful, the mysterious attack is still there. Li Yu, who looked like a dead person, shouted loudly, if possible, he really doesn't want to use his abilities. He is currently engaged in a tug of war with Gui, vying for Zhou Feng's life, but this tug of war is not fair because he must lose. Not long after the stalemate of one person in one trick, Lin Pei Jun noticed a second black shadow appearing at the entrance of the ancestral hall, waving again, but the difference was that this time the object of the wave was her. Why? Lin Pei Jun said in fear that she was different from the other two people. She had no ability at all, just an ordinary person. Therefore, unlike Zhou Feng's slow walking, she strode towards the entrance of the temple at a fast pace. Seeing this scene, Li Yu's already pale face became even more unsightly. He quickly analyzed the current situation in his mind when suddenly he shouted to Zhou Feng and Lin Pei Jun, mission failed. Light the craft paper and leave here. After speaking, he threw the two pieces of craft paper on his body to the two people. After receiving the craft paper, Zhou Feng struggled to take out a lighter from his pocket and lit it. The craft paper quickly ignited, and Zhou Feng's figure began to become ethereal until it completely disappeared. And you? Lin Pei Jun, who was standing beside her, had already taken out a lighter, but she did not immediately light it. Lin Pei Jun. This is not your first time attending a mission, and the mission has failed. 
You must obey the order, light the craft paper and leave here. Did you hear that? Lin Peijun. Li Yu saw that Lin Peijun had not left for a long time, so he roared angrily. His face was very bad now, very pale, and his eyes had turned red, bloodshot. With such a roar, Lin Peijun swallowed a mouthful of water in discomfort, lit the craft paper, and her figure began to disappear. But she didn't feel happy at all, instead she started crying and kept shouting Li Yu's name until it disappeared. After the disappearance of the two, Li Yu breathed a sigh of relief. His pressure had eased a lot, but his condition did not improve. However, Li Yu doesn't care anymore. Since becoming a dreamer, he has long been prepared to die. He sat slumped on the ground, took out a bottle of medicine from his pocket, opened the stopper, and drank it all in one gulp. It was poison, and once consumed, he would die of cardiac arrest within half an hour. He doesn't want to die in the hands of ghosts. He doesn't have to worry that after his death, strange things inside his body will invade into reality, because dreamers like him will leave those strange things in this dream after death. He threw the empty bottle onto the ground and took out a photo from another pocket with trembling hands. This photo was taken when he first got married, and the woman in the photo was wearing a pure white wedding dress with a beautiful and charming smile. Seeing his wife's smile, Li Yu also smiled and said, My life is like a dream, sometimes beautiful, sometimes bad, uh. Chapter 4, Dreamwalkers You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chen Jiwu, who had been in the bag for a long time, finally crawled out. After climbing out, he saw the familiar red environment and the black shadow around him. It continued to wave, but the object of the wave was not him, but the man sitting paralyzed on the ground. Chen Jiwu looked at Li Yu sitting on the ground, and before he could speak, Li Yu said, It seems that you, like me, are both dreamers. What? Chen Jiwu did not understand what Li Yu said. Newcomers. It's okay to tell you. The bag that contains you, if you're weird or something else, you can't crawl out. Li Yu noticed Chen Jiwu's surprised expression and realized that he was likely a newcomer, so he explained. However, he spoke quickly and seemed to have difficulty breathing. I don't understand what you're saying. What else is a dreamer? Why did you appear in my ancestral hall? Where did the other two go? Chen Jiwu saw his appearance and asked all the questions in his heart. Li Yu glanced at him and said, I can answer your question. Dreamwalker literally means the person walking in the dream. We are official people, and the other two are my colleagues. We specialize in solving this dream. Now our mission has failed, and the other two have left this dream. If you can also go out, I recommend you to join me and join the Dreamwalker headquarters. After Li Yu finished speaking these words, his breath became even weaker and his breathing became more difficult, as if he was about to die at any moment. He took his last breath and said to Chen Jiwu, Now we must go find the cowhide paper that may exist in your village, then light it and leave here. The cowhide paper is yellow-brown, and it will only appear on the bedside table, table, chair, or door. As long as these places are not there, there is no need to search. What? So you? Chen Jiwu was frightened by his words, but he didn't confirm them and stood still. Li Yu knew that the newcomer had no movement and he definitely didn't believe him, so he struggled to pull the pistol from his waist. I won't deceive you. This is my gun, you should go now. After seeing the gun, Chen Jiwu immediately took action, because even if this man was not an official in the past, he should have left. Compared to the shadow, the harm of the handgun was even more frightening. He ran away from the ancestral hall and passed through the gate. Fortunately, the dark shadow at the gate had disappeared. Otherwise, it would not have been him leaving, but to go and die. Ah! After he left, Li Yu let out a scream, and strangely, the voices around him seemed to be unable to be transmitted. The sound seemed to be fixed, only he could hear it. After leaving the ancestral hall, Chen Jiwu began searching for the surrounding houses. When he found that he could open each house himself, 
he felt very strange. He felt that today's nightmare was completely different from before, as if he had glimpsed the tip of an iceberg in a strange world. I can't believe everything he says, but I should also believe it. Forget it, I'll find that so. Called craft paper first, and then leave here according to his method. Chen Jiwu didn't trust Li Yu very much, after all, they were in the same group, and another man even kicked him hard. Although he added a lot of persuasiveness to his words after taking out the deviated gun, he was afraid that in case his gun was illegally obtained. Chen Jiwu did not continue to think, but began to search for the craft paper with great effort. Outside, the city of the state. In a dreamer's branch, two people woke up from their dreams, they were Lin Peijun and Zhou Feng. They coincidentally got off the bed and opened the door. Katcha. Two doors were opened, and the two of them saw each other. After a moment of silence, they walked out of the room. Arriving outside, in the lobby of the Dream Walker branch, where many people were working, someone ran over with a document and said, Captain, there have been a large number of missing cases in Jiangcheng, suspected to have new dreams. Yuan Ping has already gone to the scene and is dreaming to solve them. If everything goes smoothly, the branch will also recruit several groups of colleagues. Dreams are never solved once and will never be experienced again. On the contrary, as long as you can survive from a dream, you can never escape the fate of entering a dream again. The difference is simply that you actively enter a certain dream, or you are forced to dream within a certain time limit. Dreams are also different. Some dreams are impossible for ordinary people to enter, while others only seek ordinary people to enter. Some dreams allow both ordinary people and dreamers to enter. After listening to his colleague's report, Lin Peijun let out a hmm. The subordinate noticed her crying eyes and asked, What's wrong with the captain? Lin Peijun looked at her and took a deep breath, saying, Xiao Hong, establish a new file, summon souls, see. No, B. Level. This is the note for this time. Also, change Vice Minister Li's status to Missing. Ah. Didn't Vice Minister Li wake up with you? Xiao Hong looked surprised. Do as I say. Lin Peijun put on a serious expression. Yes, Xiao Hong lowered her head and turned around to leave. How long do you have left? After seeing her leave, Zhou Feng silently spoke to Xu Yuan www.zhaozhuyuan.com. Half a month, upon hearing her answer, Zhou Feng smiled and said, I am truly an ordinary person. I will only be entering a new dream in two days at most. This intuition is very strong. If they were to pass the dream normally, they wouldn't have such a short rest time, but they wouldn't. Lighting the craft paper can indeed leave the dream, but the next time they enter the dream, the time will be significantly reduced. The next level of danger is unknown, so unless there is no other way out, generally no one will light the craft paper and leave. I'd rather I'm not an ordinary person. Upon hearing his words, Lin Peijun was somewhat excited. He he, Zhou Feng ignored her and went to fetch a glass of water before returning to his room. He must rest up now, otherwise he will die in the next dream. Lin Peijun was very angry as he watched him return to the room. After establishing the file, Xiao Hong returned and said to her, Captain, headquarters phone number. Lin Peijun watched as she took a deep breath and adjusted her state. Great, finally found it, Chen Jiwu found a yellow-brown craft paper on the table in a villager's house. The content recorded on the craft paper also appeared in his mind. Don't be seen by him. Remember to close the door. Stay away from him. What does it mean? To stay away from whom? Who is he? Is it that dark shadow? Chen Jiwu looked at the recorded content with confusion, but he thought of the dark figure that had been entangled with him. After all, that dark figure always stands in front of an open door, waving at itself. Although I have become accustomed to it, it is still too eerie. Chapter 5, Leaving You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chen Jiwu, who had already found the craft paper, tried to light it. 
he went to the kitchen stove, but found that it couldn't catch fire. Then he started searching for lighters throughout the entire house, but not to mention lighters, there was nothing in the whole house except for furniture. He changed to another house and continued his search, but it was the same. At this moment, Chen Jiwu remembered the person sitting paralyzed in the temple. He knows the way to leave, so he must have a lighter on him, he said as soon as he thought of this, he immediately ran back towards the direction of the temple. Chen Jiwu's conjecture is correct, because every dreamer is fully prepared before falling asleep, just in case. What he didn't know was that the man Li Yu, who was teaching him how to leave just now, had already died. When he ran back to the ancestral hall and stepped into the gate, his feet could not be lifted, which was exactly the same as the feeling he had just been caught. This is the situation again, what's going on? Chen Jiwu is very unwilling now. He can leave as long as he borrows the fire, but the feeling of being unable to move has returned. Suddenly, he felt a chill on his left side and turned to see that the black shadow was right beside him, very close to him. Before he could make any movement, he felt someone holding onto his neck. He looked down and saw that it was a dark shadow stretching out his right hand, tightly gripping his neck. The dark shadow wanted to lift him up, but Chen Jiwu's feet were still stuck in the soil, and a new strange force wanted to bury him alive. Two different eerie forces, using Chen Jiwu's body as a rope, are engaged in a tug of war, and both sides are fighting fiercely without giving way to each other. Chen Jiwu was extremely uncomfortable with such ups and downs, and he felt like he was about to split in half. He, who was feeling unwell, suddenly wanted to vomit, and soon his body began to vomit uncontrollably. His vomit is not any food residue, but water. Chen Jiwu vomited a large amount of water without any intention of stopping, and a large amount of water flowed out of his mouth. After touching the water, Black Shadow's hand immediately withdrew and let go of Chen Jiwu. Without the Black Shadow in confrontation, Chen Jiwu quickly sank into the land, but only to the point where his feet were submerged, he no longer fell in. Chen Jiwu continued to vomit, and the water he vomited kept flowing down his body. Whenever the water he vomited touched the ground, it would form small pits. Quickly, a pit formed in his feet and they no longer sank into the soil. At this moment, he finally stopped vomiting. The whole person became wet all over, panting heavily in the pit. Almost died, that dark shadow is so dangerous. After taking a break, he struggled to crawl out of the pit. He dared not rest for too long, afraid that the dark shadow would come and pinch his neck again. Fortunately, this paper is not wet, Chen Jiwu felt a little relieved holding the craft paper. He is worried that this paper may get wet and he won't be able to light it with a lighter later. He ran into the lobby soaked all over, hoping to borrow a fire from the man, but he didn't see him at the place where Li Yu had just collapsed. And where he had just collapsed, only his clothes were left, while the others disappeared. Has he left? Chen Jiwu thought he had left in some way and walked over to search for the clothes left by Li Yu. Finally, he successfully found a lighter and wedding photos of Li Yu and his wife. Chen Jiwu stuffed this wedding photo into his pocket and started lighting craft paper with a lighter. He didn't pay attention to the pistol lying on the ground. Firstly, he couldn't use it. Secondly, he was afraid that he would be discovered carrying a pistol when he went out. If he was mistaken for a terrorist, the misunderstanding would be huge. Feeling his own figure, Chen Jiwu, who was becoming increasingly blurred, became nervous, afraid of any accidents. However, as his body completely disappeared, there was no abnormality, but when he, the last living person, left, the dream also spiraled out of control. In reality, the Chen family ancestral hall has disappeared and disappeared. Reality, Yang Cheng. It seems that that person didn't lie to me, he really came out. Chen Jiwu saw the familiar streets around him and recognized it as a small town three kilometers away from his home. He walked towards the police station in the small town because his father worked there. As soon as Chen Jiwu entered, he met a familiar person, his father's colleague, Uncle Zheng. Uncle Zheng, 
is my dad here? Upon hearing these words, a middle-aged man known as Uncle Zheng at the front desk looked up and saw Chen Jiwu standing at the gate. The man who was working hard appeared somewhat surprised, Xiao Chen. Um, what's going on? Uncle Zheng, is my dad here? Although Chen Jiwu felt that Uncle Zheng's expression was strange, he didn't say anything. It's really you, Xiao Chen. Where have you been these days? Uncle Zheng stood up excitedly from his chair, bypassed the front desk, and came to Chen Jiwu's side. Um, have I disappeared for a long time, haven't I? Chen Jiwu has no concept of time at all, nor does he blame him, because he has never looked at the time from falling into the well to just coming out, his phone is not with him, and he doesn't wear a watch, so naturally it's unclear how long it has been. Three days. Three whole days. Your dad can't even eat food every day now. When I came in the morning, how heavy were your dad's dark circles under his eyes? Do you know? Uncle Zheng patted Chen Jiwu's shoulder and felt his hands slightly wet. It was then that he noticed that Chen Jiwu was completely wet. Why are you always wet? Upon hearing Uncle Zheng's words, Chen Jiwu disguised himself as embarrassed and said, Ahem, when I came just now, I passed by a large food stall and the owner didn't notice me, so she accidentally spilled it on me. Oh. Uncle Zhang's eyes were pondering, unsure if he believed it or not. In order to make the atmosphere less awkward, Chen Jiwu changed the topic. Uncle Zheng, I won't disturb your work anymore. If my dad is not here, can you give me his car key? I'll drive his electric bike back. Okay, your dad just went to the police. I'll give you his electric car key. Please be slow on the way and remember to wear a helmet. Uncle Zheng returned to his post and grabbed a key from the table for me. Okay, I still cherish my life. I will wear my helmet. Goodbye, Uncle Zheng. Chen Jiwu took the key, said goodbye to Uncle Zheng, and then drove an electric car outside to go home. Uncle Zheng saw Chen Jiwu's back as he left and turned back. He walked up to a young police officer and patted his shoulder, saying, Xiao Zhang, three days ago, the disappearance case reported by Old Chen can be closed. You can withdraw the declaration of disappearance. Is it over? Has Uncle Chen's son been found? Well, I found it. I just drove his dad's electric car home. Okay, I'll take care of it. MMM Uncle Zheng returned to his position. And after the young police officer withdrew his declaration of disappearance, a printer beside him was generating a document. Name. Chen Jiwu, age. 18, he stood up with this document and knocked on an office. Chapter 6, Dreams That Cannot Be Escaped. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. When Chen Jiwu returned home, he found that his grandmother and several younger brothers were already waiting for him at the doorstep. After seeing me come back, my grandmother immediately walked up with a complex expression on her face. But Chen Jiwu only saw excitement and anger. He felt like he couldn't help but scold, but there was nothing he could do. Where have you been these three days? Your friends say they haven't seen you. Did you go out to play or something? Grandma looked at me and saw that there were no missing arms or legs. She thought I had gone out to play and looked even angrier. Chen Jiwu heard his grandmother's words and gave a reason he had already thought of. Ah, I went to Qiguang Mountain with friends for a few days to relax. Why don't you bring your phone? Don't tell me, do you really need to call? Grandma finished beating Chen Jiwu, but he didn't dodge and obediently accepted the blow. Ha, huh, I forgot. I won't do it again next time. Chen Jiwu assured his grandmother. Humph, but maybe it's right for you to go out and relax. Your complexion has noticeably improved a lot, unlike before. Let's go first. Grandma took Chen Jiwu's hand and walked into the room. Okay, Chen Jiwu picked up a younger brother, walked into the house with his grandmother, drank some water, and then took a shower. Drizzling hot water from the showerhead, 
Chen Jiwu felt a little strange because he didn't feel that the water was hot, not even warm water. He turned the hot and cold switch and turned it all the way towards the hot direction. If it were normal, he would definitely be scalded, but now he doesn't feel anything at all. Strange, there's no power outage at home, is it because the water heater is broken? Chen Jiwu didn't think much and continued to take a shower. After taking a shower, he found that most of the elders in the family had arrived, including his parents. After a period of seeking warmth and comfort, the dinner party began. After eating a bowl, Chen Jiwu went back to the attic to sleep, citing his exhaustion. In the living room, several elders were drinking and talking about him. Although the conversations and meals downstairs were a bit noisy, he had already become accustomed to it. Chen Jiwu lay on the familiar and comfortable bed, said, I hope you don't have nightmares, and then fell asleep. However, things didn't go as planned. As midnight approached, Chen Jiwu entered a strange dream. He woke up in a pitch black room, which was very dark and had no lights on, but could still be seen. When he woke up, he found others around him, three people in total, two women and one man. These three people all looked at Chen Jiwu who had just woken up. Where is this? Chen Jiwu looked at their eyes and asked in confusion. Obviously, we have entered a dream. The man with a scar on his face said. Chen Jiwu was surprised when he heard what scar man said. He couldn't believe that he had just come out of one dream during the day and entered another dream at night. Everyone has experienced a dream at least once, let's work together, after all, the probability of surviving in a team is higher. The scar man looked at the other two women and sent them an invitation to cooperate. I have no objection, a woman agreed to the invitation. Chen Jiwu felt like a manager when he saw the woman's attire. Me too, the other woman is also. And surprisingly, she was still wearing the school uniform of a certain school. Chen Jiwu felt that she should be a little older than him, so she was probably a college student. Although he doesn't quite understand why someone still wears school uniforms in the middle of the night. Let me introduce myself. You can call me Tiger Brother. I have experienced four dreams, and this is my fifth one. The Scar Man confidently introduced himself. Xianglan experienced two dreams, the female manager also introduced the number of dream scenes she had experienced. Wen Jun, have experienced a scene, the female college student followed closely. And you. Tiger Brother looked at Chen Jiwu who was still on the ground. Cough, just call me Xiaowu. I've also experienced a dream before. Chen Jiwu got up from the ground and patted the dust off his body. I'll agree on the premise of cooperation first, don't hold me back, otherwise, oomph. Tiger Brother showed a dangerous look at others, especially Chen Jiwu. Chen Jiwu was uncomfortable under the malicious gaze of Tiger Brother, and could only show a smiling face. I hope you do the same and don't drag us down. Xianlan pulled towards Wen Jun's hand and said. Of course, Tiger got up and wanted to open the door of this pitch black room. Chen Jiwu analyzed and felt that those two women were in the same group. He probably couldn't join them, so he followed Tiger Brother. Xianlan saw that Chen Jiwu and Tiger Brother had both gone to open the door, and also pulled Wen Jun to follow behind them. Wen Jun, let's follow up, okay, Tiger Brother came to the door and placed his hand on the doorknob, saying to the people behind him, although they are not new anymore, I would like to remind you that there are only four of us living in this dream, and anyone you see later will be pretending. Why, are there no other living people? Chen Jiwu asked from behind. No, if there were, they would wake up in this room like us. I see. Chen Jiwu silently remembered this in his heart. Tiger Brother opened the door and the scene outside the room appeared in front of the four people, forming a dim corridor. Chen Jiwu walked outside and saw other rooms, each with an oil lamp hanging in front of its door. He took another look and looked for the door number of the room he had just walked out of at Shuyuan www.zhaoshuyuan.com, only to find it was, 404. He was flustered because the four characters were not auspicious numbers in his hometown. 
At this moment, he saw a tiger and the three of them walking away without waiting for him, so he quickly followed up. As he passed by a room, the door suddenly opened and a ball was thrown, hitting him and almost causing him to fall. What is it? Chen Jiwu picked up the ball from the ground and carefully examined it in his hand, only to find that it was just an ordinary leather ball, with many stains on it and it was very dirty. Chen Jiwu threw the ball onto the ground, ignoring it and following Tiger Brother's footsteps. He felt that it should be safer to have more people. After he left, the open door suddenly saw a black figure lying on the doorframe, watching his back and the rolling ball behind him. At this moment, Chen Jiwu finally caught up with Tiger and the others. They had already gone downstairs, and Chen Jiwu also noticed that the door numbers of the rooms on this floor began with three. Kid, remember to follow closely. It's not our fault for being alone and dying. Tiger Brother reminded Chen Jiwu, who was panting heavily at the back. Yes, Chen Jiwu should arrive. The two women didn't speak but the manager named Xianglan looked at Chen Jiwu with a wary gaze. They continued downstairs and finally arrived at the first floor. During this process, Chen Jiwu also discovered something. It's just that each staircase has only 12 steps, and this number of steps is not meant for people to walk, which makes him a bit nervous. After arriving on the first floor, they saw a large door, but it was locked. In front of the door, there was an old man sitting on a chair guarding the door. Chapter 7, Finding Paintings You are listening at NovelFull.audio The old man in front of the gate, seeing their group, said in a hoarse voice, You can't leave the hotel today. You can go back to your room. The old man's words startled them and made them stop, staring at the old man intently. Sister, what should I do? When Jun gripped Xiang Lan's hand in fear. It's okay, as long as we don't move around, it's safe. I'm here. Xiang Lan calmed her sister's emotions. Chen Jiwu noticed that the old man seemed to have not opened his eyes and was completely talking to them with his eyes closed. Is it blind? No, it doesn't necessarily mean it's human. Chen Jiwu remembered what Tiger Brother had said before. The stalemate between the two sides did not last long before it was interrupted by Tiger Brother, who asked the old man, why don't we leave? Chen Jiwu and those two women both looked at Tiger Brother and didn't expect him to have a conversation with the old man. The boss's painting is lost. He needs to confirm each room and resident to see if you have stolen that painting, so you must go back to your room now. The old man gave the reason why they were not allowed to leave. With so many rooms, isn't it tiring for the boss to find them alone? Tiger asked again, but this time the old man did not answer. Seeing this, he turned to discuss with Chen Jiwu and the three others. What do you think? Do you want to go back to your room? Tiger brother seems to want to hear their opinions. I don't think we should go back. If that boss is cunning and comes knocking on his door, he won't even have a chance to run away. Xianglan didn't want to return to the room, and Wen Jun behind her nodded. And you? Tiger Brother asked Chen Jiwu for his opinion again. I also don't think we should go back, Chen Jiwu heard Xianglan's words and found them very reasonable, so he decided not to go back. I also think the same way. Let's first disperse and search for possible craft paper in this layer. We need a hint to increase the probability of survival. Okay, Xianglan nodded in agreement. Although Chen Jiwu had some opinions, he didn't raise them when he saw that they all agreed. Pay attention to safety, after Tiger finished speaking, he searched in the lobby on the first floor. Two other women opened a door in the hallway and walked in. Only Chen Jiwu remained standing in place. He looked at the two women and gritted his teeth, learning from them. He opened a door and walked in. The room on the first floor has lights and is not as dark as the fourth floor, so Chen Jiwu can clearly see what is in the room. He searched for several places where craft paper would appear and found none, so he quickly left the room. He didn't want to stay in a strange room for a long time. He went to the next room, stood at the door for a while, 
took a few deep breaths, mustered courage, and was about to open the door. But the door was open from inside the room, which frightened him and he took several steps back. After the door opened, a hunchbacked old man appeared, holding a cane and holding a gourd in the other hand. Like a salesman, he followed Chin Jiwu standing not far from him to promote the gourd in his hand. Do you want a gourd? Let's have one, I made it myself. Chin Jiwu was trembling all over, wanting to run but lacking strength. He ignored the old man and stood in place. But the old man kept repeating the same sentence. Do you want a gourd? Let's have one, I made it myself. Do you want a gourd? Let's have one, I made it myself. Dot. As if Chin Jiwu couldn't leave without buying one today, he could only say in a trembling voice, I can't buy it, I don't have the money. Upon hearing his words, the old man's voice stopped and he said, No money, give me the ball behind you. Upon hearing his words, Chen Jiwu suddenly turned around and realized that behind him was a dirty ball that he had seen on the fourth floor. He carefully picked up the ball and placed it in front of the old man, gently pushing it to roll to his feet. The old man looked down at the ball and then threw the gourd in his hand to Chen Jiwu. He bent down to pick up the ball and turned around to close the door. Chen Jiwu felt that the old man should not come out for a short time, so he breathed a sigh of relief and looked at the gourd in his arms. After careful observation, he found that it was just an ordinary gourd. He opened the stopper of the gourd and there was no strange liquid inside. Chen Jiwu temporarily placed it in his arms, preparing to go to the next room. At this moment, the two women came out of the room, leaving the corridor and heading towards the hall. Chen Jiwu also saw the person named Xianglan, who seemed to be holding a piece of paper in his hand. With sharp eyes, he saw the yellow-brown paper and speculated that it might be the craft paper they were looking for. So he gave up the idea of going to the next room and followed them back to the hall. And Tiger Brother in the hall was sitting on the ground flipping through a book. When he saw them coming over, he opened a page and placed it on the ground, saying to them, Look, this is what I found in the hall. It records the check that I N status of this hotel. There are check that I N records on other floors, but not on the fourth floor. This indicates that the fourth floor is uninhabited. But we came down from the fourth floor. When June's voice trembled slightly, very scared. I know, but guessing is meaningless. We need to remind you, have you found the craft paper? Tiger asked the three people and asked if they had found the craft paper at Shuyuan www.chaoshuyuan.com. Chen Jiwu shook his head, while Xianglan took out the craft paper and said, I found it. Great, in this way, our chances of surviving will be high. What did it say on paper? We need to help Ji find the painting and bring it back to Ji's body. Xianglan said everything on the paper. Sure enough, is that the hotel owner really weird? After hearing the content, Tiger Brother fell into contemplation. Maybe we should go up to the second floor and take a look. Chen Jiwu suggested going to the second floor at this time. Don't worry, have you looked at all the rooms on the first floor? Tiger Brother finished his thinking and sat on the ground, asking Chen Jiwu. Chen Jiwu answered truthfully, No, I went to 102103, and the two of them went to 101. There are a total of 10 rooms on one floor, and we should go and see the remaining rooms. The painting we are looking for may be hidden among these seven rooms. Tiger Brother suggested. Can, okay, the others had no objections, so the four of them began to explore the remaining seven rooms on the first floor. After they entered a room, the door to room 103 opened and the old man with a cane walked out, holding the dirty ball in his arms as if wanting to go upstairs. As he passed by the hall, the old man who was sitting on a stool with his eyes closed at the entrance opened his eyelids. He had no eyes, and there was nothing under his eyelids. He stared at the old man with these hollow eyes, staring at him until he went upstairs and left the first floor. The old man on the stool closed his eyelids and continued to sit on the stool, as if nothing had happened just now. Chapter 8, Diary You are listening at NovelFull.audio 
After exploring all the rooms on the first floor, the four of them headed to the second floor. Walking on the unclean steps, Chen Jiwu suddenly remembered that there seemed to be only an elderly person living in room 103 on the entire first floor, and the other rooms were all empty. But why did only an elderly person live there? After arriving at the second floor, they saw the ten tightly closed doors on the second floor. Don't waste time, find a room alone. If you encounter danger, shout for help loudly. Tiger thinks it's too slow for everyone to gather together and search one by one, so it's better to disperse. Okay, Xianglan and Wenjun agreed. Chen Jiwu opened a door directly and walked in. Others saw that he had already started searching in the room and immediately took action. However, Xianglan and Wenjun did not separate, but continued to enter the room together. Chen Jiwu, who entered room 202, began to search for possible paintings, but soon his gaze was drawn to a window. You should know, when I was on the first floor just now, those rooms didn't have windows. Chen Jiwu thought that the room design of this hotel was originally without windows. In front of the window is a rectangular table, on which a pen and a book are placed. Chen Jiwu walked over and opened the book. After a glance, he knew that it should be the diary of the original owner of this room. He flipped through the pages of the book to retrieve the information. On December 15th, damn it, those people are here again. Although I don't have any money, I definitely won't sell it. The hotel my father left me, definitely not. But I should also find a new way to make money and fill in the gaps. Dot. On December 17th, a wealthy businessman checked into the hotel today. Old Wang told me that he had a lot of valuable things on him, and maybe I could steal them. I stole some things and exchanged them for money, but the wealthy businessman didn't seem to notice. He left. On December 18th, Old Wang told me that he found a painting in the room where the wealthy businessman lived yesterday. I sold the painting, exchanged money, and finally fixed my loophole. I was very happy today, really. December 20th why? 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 Why are they here again? Didn't I already repay the money? They told me that I only paid the interest. I was wrong, wrong. Maybe I shouldn't have paid back the money from the beginning. Kill them, and then I don't have to pay back. They seem to be going on a long trip in a few days, which gave me the opportunity. I used the reason of paying off tomorrow to let them stay on the fourth floor of the hotel. Before my father's death, he handed me a photo frame and told me that the frame was sealed with something terrifying, to be protected from a fire source. I don't know what it was, but my mother seems to have died because of it. I plan to burn down this photo frame on the fourth floor at midnight. If they don't let me live, I'll make him die hard. The diary came to an end and after reading it, Chen Jiwu felt goosebumps all over his body. He felt that the hotel owner behind him had gone crazy. And that terrifying thing is probably eerie. Wait a minute, it's written in the diary that the owner of this hotel has already sold the paintings, but the old man guarding the door said that the owner of this hotel is looking for paintings. If the owner is deceitful, then the words on the craft paper also prove that the old man is not lying. It's unreasonable to start looking for paintings again after selling them and turning them into a scam. However, it is also possible that there is not only one hotel owner. The hotel owner who is looking for the painting is likely a wealthy businessman who found out that the painting was lost and bought it back. For some reason, I bought the hotel to facilitate my search, and the original owner of the hotel had already died. This can be explained, but why did that wealthy businessman become suspicious? He went to the fourth floor. After all, it was written in his diary that there was something suspicious on the fourth floor. But the problem is that the painting is already gone. It's impossible for that painting to appear in the hotel, isn't it reasonable? Chen Jiwu, who was pondering, looked up outside the window and found nothing, pitch black. There is no road outside the hotel, which means it doesn't exist. The matter of buying the painting after leaving the hotel, Chen Jiwu shook his head and decided to discuss with Brother Hu. 
As soon as he walked out of room 202, he heard a scream, and in room 205, he heard the scream of Tiger Brother. The screams didn't last long and quickly stopped. The door to room 205 was opened and someone threw something out. Upon closer inspection, Chen Jiwu discovered that it was actually Tiger Brother's head. In reality, in a rented house, the tenant who was originally sleeping inside disappeared in perfect condition the next second, leaving only a head with an open eye and a grim face, unable to close its eyes for a long time. He couldn't believe that Tiger Brother, who was just fine, had died now with only one head left, which indicates that room 205 is in danger. Fortunately, his reaction was not slow this time. As he reacted, he suppressed the feeling of wanting to vomit and immediately ran up the stairs. He decided to go to the third floor. There is something eerie on the fourth floor, Tiger Brother just died on the second floor, and those two elderly people on the first floor don't feel very safe. Just as he was about to go up the third floor, Chen Jiwu saw two figures on the stairs. One is the old man holding a cane on the first floor, while the other is very eerie. He is covered in decay, and with every step he takes, some rotten meat falls onto the steps. Zhaozhuyuan.com These pieces of rotten meat fell onto the stairs, emitting a foul odor that was very pungent. Chen Jiwu, who saw his figure clearly, was so frightened that he immediately ran back. He would rather go back to the second floor than go to the third floor to touch these two eerie moldy heads. Returning to room 202, Chen Jiwu closed the door and blocked it with his body. Done, all floors are unsafe. Chen Jiwu's forehead was constantly sweating, and he wiped it with his hand, only to find the wound in his palm. The wound was not small, but he didn't feel any pain, but he didn't know when he was injured. Upon closer inspection, he realized that there was no blood flowing from his wound. But instead, water flowed out. Chen Jiwu rubbed his eyes, unable to believe what he saw, but the fact was that his wound did not leak blood, but rather water. And the water flowing out looked very familiar to him, as if he had seen it recently. I remember, when I was strangled by the black shadow in my last nightmare, I vomited the same thing as the water. Chen Jiwu remembered what happened in his previous dream. Based on the previous situation, the water flowing out of my body seems to be able to expel or suppress evil spirits. Chen Jiwu's face slowly wore a long lost smile, yes, it must be, otherwise the last time I was caught, I wouldn't have been able to run. After realizing his ability, Chen Jiwu decided to store the water flowing out of his wound. He took out the gourd from his arms, opened the stopper, and used the wound to face the gourd mouth, allowing the water flowing from the wound to flow into the gourd and store it. If there is any danger, pour out the water from the gourd. Chapter 9, Hotel Owner You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chen Jiwu's wound had already healed, but before that, he had stored a considerable amount of water. Hearing the sound of water in the gourd, he felt much more at ease. When did my body start to turn like this? Although such changes seem to have caused no harm to himself, he still wants to know when he became like this. Is it that well? Chen Jiwu remembered the incident where he accidentally fell into the well last time. Although he didn't know why he could wake up from his dream after falling into the well last time, everything seemed to be okay. He shook his head, letting himself not think about that because now he needed to start thinking about how to survive. Based on the current situation, it is no longer possible to find a painting to give to Gui. Who knows which room outside is in danger. If I end up in the same fate as Tiger Brother, it's all over. If you don't send the painting, there is another way to leave, light the craft paper and leave. But I didn't have any craft paper on me at all. The only piece of craft paper I saw when I came in this time was still on those two women. But now they may have run away long ago, and the entire hotel is probably left with only themselves alive. It's not realistic to go out and find craft paper because it's no different from going out to find paintings. Wait, I seem to have forgotten something. Since the water on my body can drive away or even suppress monsters, maybe I can go find that wealthy businessman who turned into monsters. 
sprinkle him with the water from me. If he is suppressed, then maybe I can go out. And I shouldn't have to go out and find him. If the gatekeeper doesn't lie, that cunning wealthy businessman will search every room. I just need to wait here for him to open the door of 202. Since that's the case, I'll wait for him here. I hope he must come. Outside, Yangcheng. In an ordinary bookstore, there is a group of people carrying a stretcher with a young man lying on it. These people don't seem to have come here to study, and the places in the bookstore that were originally intended for people to read books are now deserted. There is a middle-aged man sitting on a chair in the bookstore, smoking a cigarette, with a furrowed brow, seemingly waiting for someone. A mobile phone was placed on the desk in front of him, playing a news message. Recently, a serious flood occurred in Jiangcheng, China, causing complete damage to infrastructure. Rescue work is currently underway. In the comments section of the news, most of them are praying for disaster victims and search and rescue personnel, and there are also some different comments. Lie. Why not tell the truth? This is clearly a dream invading reality, making a scene. By the time they finished posting these comments, it was estimated that someone had already come to check the water meter. Captain, we have found him. A person wearing a suit uniform walked up to the middle dot aged man and pointed to the young man lying on a stretcher. And this young man is Chen Jiwu, who hasn't woken up yet after falling asleep. Sleeping. Didn't you wake him up? The middle dot aged man took another puff of smoke, his hairline was very high, as if he was about to go bald. I called, but I didn't wake up, that's not sleeping anymore. When did he fall asleep? The middle-aged man touched his shiny head and extinguished his cigarette with his hand. I asked his family, it seems like it was around 11 o'clock last night. The subordinates in suits and uniforms quickly said. What time is it now? It's almost 10 o'clock, have you been dreaming for so long? The middle-aged man put down his cigarette and frowned, is there any news from headquarters? Headquarters is requesting foreign aid, the middle-aged man took out a lighter, lit his cigarette again, started smoking, and exhaled a mouthful of smoke. There shouldn't be much follow dot up on this matter of requesting foreign aid. In the past three years, more and more dreams have invaded reality, and now they have started to lose control. It can be foreseen that in the future, such things will only happen more frequently. Those monsters that were originally only in dreams will also appear in reality as dreams invade reality. Unfortunately, there are currently too few capable dreamers, most of whom are ordinary people. The man finished smoking a cigarette, then took a new one and lit it. In every branch of dreamers in China, there are only a maximum of three capable dreamers, usually only two, and in some sparsely populated areas, there is only one, resulting in a severe shortage of manpower. So every new dreamer is like opening a blind box, and it's possible that a dreamer with eerie abilities will emerge. Chen Jiwu was brought here for the same reason, but unfortunately, in the past three years in Yangcheng, he was the only confirmed person to be recovered. Returning to his dream, Chen Jiwu was already almost asleep, waiting for him to become a mysterious wealthy businessman. At this moment, he noticed that the lights in the room flickered because there was only one hanging light from the ceiling, so this was very obvious. Chen Jiwu's vigilance was once again heightened, as he stared at the old, damp door of room 202, loosening the stopper of the gourd and preparing for a sneaky rush in at any time. Zhaozhuyuan.com But at this moment, a voice came from behind him. Who are you? Why are you in my room? Upon hearing the sound, Chen Jiwu quickly turned around, opened the stopper of the gourd, and splashed the water out of it. However, as soon as he splashed the water out, he realized something was wrong, as he noticed the deary suddenly appearing behind him, his body resembling a cloud of smoke. The water passed through his body and fell to the ground without any effect. Chen Jiwu recalled what he had just said and thought, his room. Is he the former owner of this hotel? But isn't he already dead? In Chen Jiwu's original conjecture, the former hotel owner had already died. 
Later, a wealthy businessman bought the hotel and became the new owner, but it turned out to be a scam when he went to the fourth floor. What are you doing? If you don't go out again, I'll report the case. The figure shouted angrily. Upon hearing what seemed to be the roar of the former hotel owner, Chen Jiwu quickly said, there was a misunderstanding, it was a misunderstanding. I thought you were the creepy one outside, so I splashed water all over you. What are you talking nonsense about? Get out of here now. He didn't seem to believe Chen Jiwu's words and kept asking him to leave his room, preparing to take action and drive away the person who had broken into his room. No, wait a moment, listen to me. You're already dead. Although I don't know in what form you're still alive, you're already dead. This is a fact, and I can't go out. The monster outside is still looking for me. As soon as I go out, I'll also die. Of course, Chen Jiwu won't go out. Are you joking? The water in his gourd is mostly gone. If he goes out, he is pure and seeking death. He certainly cannot do this. Chapter 10 Wealthy Merchants You are listening at NovelFull.audio I'm dead. What are you talking nonsense about? The hotel owner still didn't believe Chen Jiwu's words. Really, did you forget what you wrote in your diary about you and the people who lent you high interest loans dying together? Chen Jiwu pointed to the only table in the room, on which there was also a diary that someone had opened. Diary the hotel owner looked at the diary and walked over. Chen Jiwu breathed a sigh of relief when he saw that he didn't continue to let himself get out. He looked at the hotel owner who was flipping through his diary and couldn't help but ask, what's wrong? Someone touched my diary and rewrote its contents. After speaking, the hotel owner looked maliciously at Chen Jiwu, suspecting that he had tampered with his diary. Don't look at me, I haven't changed your diary, but I really want to know which part of the diary content has been changed. Although he couldn't see the hotel owner's gaze, he still felt a malicious intent. Chen Jiwu quickly clarified that he hadn't changed the hotel owner's diary. Why should I tell you? The hotel owner did not answer him, but instead questioned. This is very useful to me, really, and you're already dead. Don't you want to know why you've become like this? We should be honest, communicate with each other, exchange the information we both have, so that maybe I can go out and you can understand what your current situation is. Chen Jiwu tried his best to persuade, but in order to show sincerity, he said, I can tell you my situation. I am a dreamer, at least that's what they call it. For me, this is a surreal nightmare. I don't know what would happen if I died here, but my intuition tells me that I can't die here. To be honest, if you hadn't sold the painting, I might have already left. After speaking, Chen Jiwu was still a bit angry. Although he could not go looking for a painting, he couldn't do without it. Without a painting, he would cut off his own path. I didn't sell the painting, nor did I steal the money from that wealthy businessman. What? The hotel owner's words surprised Chen Jiwu. The hotel owner, seeing that he didn't believe it, said displeased, at that time, I was indeed short of money, but I wouldn't steal things from residents. This is my principle. What is the new way of making money you're talking about? Naturally, it's selling handmade crafts in hotels and helping others earn money. So it turns out that I was misled by the content of my diary. He originally thought that the innkeeper had sold the painting and paid back the money, but he didn't expect that it was his own hard work that paid back. It seems that the painting is still in the hotel. He doesn't suspect the hotel owner is lying, because deceiving him is meaningless. It's your turn, tell me what a dreamer is all about. It's the hotel owner's turn to inquire with Chen Jiwu. Dreamwalkers literally mean people walking in dreams, and we involuntarily enter them, just like when I woke up in room 404, I was originally. Wait a moment, before Chen Jiwu could finish speaking, the hotel owner suddenly interrupted him. What's wrong? My hotel has only three floors in total, where did you get room 404? The hotel owner said indifferently. What? Chen Jiwu was startled. 
he clearly remembered coming down from the fourth floor with Tiger Brother and the others. He asked in shock, as mentioned in the diary, you brought people to the fourth floor. It's the third floor. I brought people to the third floor, and I remember I didn't burn that photo frame. I just burned those people to death in the room on the third floor. What about the photo frame? I don't remember. The hotel owner seems to have forgotten, he is lost in memories. Upon hearing what the hotel owner said, Chen Jiwu's mind was in a daze. At this moment, he suddenly felt the piercing cold and turned around to realize it. The originally tightly closed door has now been opened, and there is still a tall male corpse standing outside the door, who is preparing to walk in. This. This, is this the wealthy businessman who turned into a fraud? Although he had never seen a wealthy businessman, it didn't prevent him from guessing. Damn it, he's here, but there's no more water in my gourd. Chen Jiwu began desperately using his teeth to create wounds for himself, but it was of no use except to make himself grimace in pain. Water. Come out of here. Ah. Just as the male corpse walked into the room, Chen Jiwu's eyes lit up. It was then that he noticed a continuous stream of water flowing out of his teeth-filled hands. Chen Jiwu was overjoyed and immediately splashed the water onto the male corpse, causing him to stop and not continue walking towards him. Success Chen Jiwu was very happy, which proved that his conjecture was correct. The water on his body could expel monsters. He splashed water on the male corpse again, but found it to be ineffective, so he continued to splash water at the door to prevent the male corpse from entering. Chen Jiwu, who saw his temporary safety, turned to the hotel owner and said, Big brother, don't think about it. They have all knocked on their door. Where did you hide their paintings? Go to the book garden www.jiaoshuyuan.com and return them as soon as possible. Upon hearing Chen Jiwu's words, the hotel owner finally came to his senses and looked at him and the male corpse outside the door, saying, I have entrusted the painting to old Wang for safekeeping. He is on the first floor. Upon hearing these words, Chen Jiwu said in despair, First floor. That's not over, that's right at the door, I can't even get out. Let me go, what? Are you going? Of course, that painting was left behind by someone else. Now that someone has come knocking on my door, it's natural for me, who is the boss, to return the painting. After speaking, the innkeeper walked towards the door and towards the male corpse. Chen Jiwu looked at his back and instantly felt that the hotel owner's body, composed of smoke, suddenly became tall and sacred. The hotel owner walked up to the male corpse and was about to pass by, but he didn't expect the corpse to suddenly strike and scatter the hotel owner's body, causing a cloud of smoke to explode beside him. Dot. Chen Jiwu fell silent upon seeing this scene, even stopping his splashing hand. But soon, the hotel owner's body condensed back into shape behind the male corpse. Seeing the hotel owner reappearing behind the male corpse, Chen Jiwu breathed a sigh of relief. When he saw that he was fine, he worked hard to splash water to prevent the male corpse from entering. He must hold on until the hotel owner brings back the painting so that he can safely leave this dream. The water that was splashed at the door quickly dried up, so he had to keep splashing water. If it stopped, the male corpse would come in. But after he kept splashing water, he found his head very painful, and he could clearly feel some small bug nibbling on his brain. The more water flows out of oneself, the more severe this symptom becomes.